Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, this doesn't have graphs and charts, but I want to talk in the abstract for a little bit. So I'm going to have to, what thumbnail do I use for this? Well, whatever you're seeing right now is what I landed on, but I think I'm going to have a hard time <laughs> figuring out what graphic goes with this video. Um, but this is, this is kind of important. So what I want to talk about is a, is a theory. It's a premise and it's borne out with a lot of data. If you've been watching the sales analysis videos, there's a whole playlist there. Please check them out. Um, you'll start to see some recurring themes. Once you see that, I think it becomes easier to predict what's going to happen with a comic. Now, here's, uh, here's the thing, one of the clear signs. And, and when something happens, you know, 50 times, I'm not cherry picking titles, by the way, you can go through, you can go over and over and over. You see the same thing. A comics typically have attrition. They typically sink in sales. Now, in the past, you know, so, some people have pointed out like, hey, well, if that's true, then why haven't all titles ever sunk to zero? It's because titles do things that intercept that attrition. They bring on a new creative team. They launch a new storyline. We have to think further back than 2010 because it was really 2010, 2008 or so where things got unhealthy in terms of relaunches. So let's talk about the past further back for a moment. When you have a title, you would see natural falls of sales. And I'm going to pick a couple. Um, so a lot of people want me to do Spawn. I am doing Spawn, but it's not a particularly good one. The Walking Dead is probably one of the best ones to look at because what you'll see is at the start of an arc, sales go up. And then you'll see sales slowly start to fall until either the climax of that arc or a new arc begins. And then the sales bump up again. And you see this kind of stair-step growth. The trick that The Walking Dead managed to pull off and why it was such a healthy title uh, was that every time it would, would rise, it would rise a little bit more and would fall a little bit less. And so you'd see this upward climb. Now, the same is true if we go back even to the 80s and the newsstand and other things, you see the same thing happening. You see a comic, you see an arc. It's why, by the way, uh, a lot of uh, comic companies were... Uh, fairly allergic to doing, you know, multi-year storylines. Chris Claremont was able to pull it off, but he, he didn't, you know, a lot of people misunderstand. Chris Claremont was not doing a two-year storyline. Chris Claremont was doing a two years of subplots or sometimes more, and he would have these story arcs uh, still in two issues, three issues, sometimes one and done, six issues, sometimes nine issues. Occasionally you get a 12-issue event, but usually that was a crossover, so it wasn't taking a year to develop. You'd see these things happen. And even with Claremont, you'd see the same things. The start of an arc would typically bump up and it would shrink, bump up and shrink. So that's what we talk about with attrition. Attrition is normal and natural in comics and you have to do something in order to intercept it, get the sales to bump back up again. And if you do that well, then you, uh, you know, you have a basically, a, you get it to a high level of sales and you have a flat line, which in this case is good. You have just stability. If you do it really, really well, then the title slowly grows like Walking Dead did. But what happened more recently is that comic companies have gotten addicted to this concept of relaunching. So what comic companies always knew, and it's funny, you go back to some old things Jim Shooter talked about uh, quite a while ago. Uh, he talked about how you wanted to do relaunches sparingly because it was a gimmick that it was if it was overused, it would lose its meaning. Now, he made these comments back when he was uh, doing some work at Valiant, so quite some time ago. Um, it's, it'd be interesting to revisit those comments with him today. And I, I plan to, um, it, 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 we've seen that prediction come very, very true because what's happened is that comic books relaunch, they get some interest buzz. You get a bunch of more, uh, you know, you get the sales to, to rise up again, instead of doing a new storyline within the same run, they do a relaunch, a brand new number one, and they start that clock again. The problem is the attrition falls because the number one is built on the backs of speculators and other people who aren't in for the long haul. So what you see is the comic will eventually return right back to where it was and potentially even further because you've eroded some of the collectors, some of the people who, who use the, uh, the relaunch as a jumping off point. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Every successive relaunch seems to speed this process up faster. Every time they relaunch, it falls a little steeper. And you see this in my sales analysis videos. You can see this with any title for yourself. If you want to, just go to Comicron, pick anything, throw a dart at a board, pick any book. You pick Green Arrow, you can pick, you know, X-Men, you can pick 
America Chavez. I don't care what you, I, that book didn't relaunch, but you know what I mean. Pick whatever you want and look at a book that's, that's relaunched. And what you'll see is, especially if it's multiple times, it falls faster and faster. The attrition happens faster and faster. To combat that, because I think the comic publishers, they were aware that this was happening. They're, they they understood this. They started juicing the number one issue more. So they got more of a sales bump. And they did this through variants. And they did this through incentives. And then they'd throw in programs like overships and incentives into the middle of the run in order to try and slow that to uh, at least get, you know, basically they're trying to do what comics did in the 80s and the 90s uh, more successfully. They do the overships typically for the start of a new storyline. And they would do that basically to say, hey, we're, you know, they're trying to recreate what happened back in the old days. A new storyline equals new readers. The problem is you've now trained your comic buying audience that you're relaunching, you're rebooting, and, and the, to, to pay less attention to new storylines. And if you look at the last five, six years, you've seen both Marvel and DC do a number of tricks to the cover to say, you know, I, this is issue 13, but it's also issue number one of a brand new story of a brand new arc. Remember seeing that? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to signal to you, hey, um, you know, come on board. We've got something new. They're trying to recreate that thing that happened in the past, but it's not particularly working. The If you look at comics from the 80s and the 90s, you look at some of the sales trends to today, you see that the start of a new arc, the start of a new storyline does not hold the same interest as it did for comics in the past. The effect that The Walking Dead have, where you see this stair step up of interest whenever a new storyline or new arc began, doesn't exist anymore. New storylines seem to just erode. And that is a, is a huge problem for comics because basically they've taught their audience to think about comics differently. Now, what's the solution here? Here's where I'm going to throw out my opinion on it. And I, I'm, I'm coming at this from data. So I'm sure a lot of people will disagree. They'll tell me that's not what Kelly Sue DeConnick said. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that video was such a headache yesterday. Anyway, um, here's my opinion of what should happen. Comics need to gut it out. And gutting it out is going to be very, very painful because you're going to see comics dip you're going to see sales fall in some cases, but you need to just keep going. You need to stop with fictional incentive programs and overships and definitely with relaunches, not for everything, you know, keep try an AB experiment, do half your line one way, half your line another way, but just keep going. What you're going to see is that the sales are going to fall. They're going to drop and drop and drop. And then you should hit bottom and start climbing up again. But you need to have that moment of climbing up again. And you need to have the patience as a company to be willing to accept leaving some money off the table because you're not getting that, that relaunch uh, boost of sales, which is very addictive. I mean, very, very powerful. It, it just, you have to, you have to be patient and try. If you don't, um, you are you're, you're going to continue to feed this machine. Unfortunately, we see where this is leading. Comics are falling quicker and quicker and quicker after every relaunch. And you bring on a new creative team or you get a, a brilliant idea for a new story. And it's kind of, it's getting lost. It's getting wasted. Those, those story arcs no longer hold the impact that they once did. And that's, that, that kind of trivializes what a lot of writers can do. I mean, if, if you're a writer, your, your message now is to try and build up some level of marketing campaign to feed your relaunch. And then, you know, what happens from issues two till 12 until you relaunch again really doesn't matter too much. You just kind of run out the clock until you start over again. That's, that's painful. As a comic reader, I hate that. I absolutely hate it. I, I would be willing to bet a lot of comic writers hate that too. We need to start, the comic publishers need to start signing writers and artists for long-term contracts. They need to desperately do that. Don't sign, you know, like, like, Hey, if you're doing white Knight, don't sign volume three, sign volume three, four, five, and six, sign a bunch, just get, get it in the bank, provide some stability there. You know, I, I don't know if James Tinian has this deal on, on Batman, but just get him on board. Say, you know what? Here's a hundred issue contract. We're going to write it out. Now there's risk to this. You can always get a writer who's deeply unpopular and they send the character into a bad spot. And that's why you need to have editors carefully controlling 
you know, at least to some extent, the pitch, you know, make sure that you're not completely isolating and losing the fan base in the process, but you need stability. Financially, though, it's absolutely going to cause sales to fall, bottom out, and rise again. But I would argue we have to go through it. We have to take that medicine and go out to the other side because if we don't, we're continuing to feed a very bad system. Now, you know, a lot more can be said about this. Two hours more of video can be said by this, but I want to put this out here as food for thought. So my opinion, my opinion alone, it's what I see when I look at the numbers. I'm curious to hear what you think. So let me know in the comments below. Let me know if I picked a good uh, graphic for to be running on this video because I really have no idea. Um, and most importantly, yeah, like and subscribe, please. Thank you. Um, I, I, this sounds sarcastic. I, I, I mean it. I just feel like a total tool when I say that every single video. You know what I mean? I need to just pay somebody to make a nice like like and subscribe graphic that can go up in the end screen and, uh, and, and stop trying to, you know, say this. Uh, I'm not a good pitch man. What, what can I say? Thank you for listening.